French Polynesia has a sexy secret below the surface of its pristine, crystal clear waters. Once a year, on the full moon between June and July, Fakarava becomes home to one of the rarest marine events in the entire world. A mass spawning event where tens of thousands of grouper get frisky all at the same time. We've sailed to one of the most remote atolls on Earth to try and experience it firsthand. But we won't be the only ones crashing the party. Hundreds of sharks will share the waters with us as we battle currents, huge waves, and squalls in hopes of witnessing the main event. But the whole thing is totally at the mercy of tens of thousands of wild animals running solely on instinct. And when the big night finally approaches, we have no idea what to expect. It was so hectic, and I was just like, <gasps> Brian asked me to, would you do it again like, tomorrow morning? And I was like, absolutely not. A lot of exciting things going on. <laughs> the wind is pumping. Look at this. Into the solid 20s and it's been like that the whole night. The waves are pretty big even in here, but we're here because the groupers are here. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it is the grouper spawning. It's an incredible event. All the grouper congregate in the past here for basically a huge fish orgy and we get to swim through it. When you put it that way, it sounds pretty simple, but the synchronicity between Mother Nature and all the different marine life that take part in the event, and us divers who are keen to witness it all, makes us one of the most fascinating and challenging dives we've ever attempted. The next days would be a build-up to the main event, but for the grouper themselves, the process has already been weeks in the making. The males make the journey from the open ocean and all around the atolls of French Polynesia to the South Pass here in Fakarava. They lead solitary lives for most of the year, but they spend weeks crowded into this treacherous place where they fight for position to pass along their genes. But the grouper aren't the only ones gathering in mass at this site. Hundreds and hundreds of sharks and other predators will assemble in hopes of capitalizing on the all-you-can-eat grouper buffet that appears every single year in this exact spot. Now in the days leading up to the spawning, the females have arrived and the real drama will begin to unfold, which is what we hope to witness and capture over the course of multiple dives. We're all suited up, and Brooke is gonna take care of Sierra. Bye, Mommy, Daddy. Bye. Bye, -bye. After loading up camera equipment and dive gear, we headed over to pick up a few friends from another boat who will play a critical role in executing these dives. Each incoming and outgoing tide creates extreme current as an incredible amount of water rushes either in or out of the lagoon through the narrow pass where the grouper congregate. This means that unlike most of the dives we do where we can anchor the dinghy, swim around freely, and then navigate back, here in Fakarava, it would be impossible to swim against the current to return back to our starting point. So we'll need to dive in teams allowing one person to stay in the dinghy at all times, keeping a lookout for the divers and following them through the water by chasing their bubbles. Because of the currents, we also need to time our dives accordingly on an incoming tide so that as we finish, we will be swept into the sheltered protection of the lagoon instead of getting scattered out to the rough water of the open ocean. Starting from outside the pass and working our way in would make for a safer and more controlled dive but it turned out getting into position and setting up the gear was one hell of a wild ride. We hit the water and immediately descended to a depth of about 110 feet or 34 meters so we could hug the seafloor and stay out of the current as much as possible. The reefs of Fakarava are some of the most pristine and unspoiled on planet Earth. And even without the grouper spawning event, it's known as a world-class dive all on its own. The powerful tidal flow defines the ecosystem here by creating an incredibly nutrient-rich environment that allows the 700 species of fish and 500 species of coral that live here to thrive. Schools of fish surrounded us and sharks patrolled by overhead and it wasn't long before we got our first glimpse of what we came here to see. The reef was literally blanketed in grouper, 
and none of our expectations prepared us for how it felt to see something like this underwater. experience was incredibly overwhelming. Somehow, all of these thousands upon thousands of grouper know exactly when and where to gather, year in and year out. The lucky ones will pass on their genes to the next generation, and the unlucky ones will become breakfast. Even if we're just observers, it felt humbling and surreal to find ourselves in the middle of it all. And as we approached the ledge of the reef wall, we found ourselves taken aback by a sight just as unbelievable. We looked up to see a literal wall of gray reef sharks in front of us, something we've never experienced to this degree in our many years of diving all around the world. Fakarava is actually home to the highest density of gray reef sharks ever recorded, thanks not only to the protection of the sharks, but also to the protection of their prey, which allows them to thrive in such incredible numbers. During the day, they're calm and swim passively through the water column, and it isn't until night falls they begin hunting in packs in an all-out feeding frenzy, a behavior that we hope to witness during the spawning event in a few days. But for now, we continue to drift through the pass in awe of what was happening all around us as we made our way towards the shallows. The first dive was a success by all accounts, and the craziest part was that we knew it would just keep getting better and better as the spawning event approached. We celebrated with some sundowners on our friend's boat and recalled all our favorite encounters of the dive, but the next day, things were looking a little bit less rosy. Oh, here it comes. Are you ready for the squall, Nugs? Right over there. That's a squall. Squall! There's our track. So you kind of see our hook is up here where we dropped it. And so last night we were swinging in here and now we're swinging a little bit over towards the side because the wind direction has changed. And when the wind comes up, it's stretched our chain out a little bit more but we're still we're still hanging pretty good Sadly, when I was going down yesterday, it's quite hectic when you go down. <laughs> you know, everybody is just like, jumps in, we're kind of out in like ocean swell. I was not clearing properly as we were going in and the water is like so clear. I don't think I realized like how fast I was descending. So I got some pressure in my ear. So I went up a little bit and it felt completely fine. Uh, for the rest of the dive but then when I came up I was starting to feel like a lot of pressure in my ear and I think I got something called swimmer's ear which is basically when you get water like poured inside your ear and within like two hours it was like super painful but luckily uh, Eric and Warren on we sail have this <laughs> it looks like one of those old school phones and it's basically like an ear dryer so you put this in your ear, you like press it. So I did that and it blows hot air into your ear to dry it out. And it literally said like, bam, like a big kind of like really painful pop. And then like a bunch of water came out. 
and I started feeling a lot better. Then they also had these like swimmer's ear drops that I've been using. So I've been using these and that dryer thing and I feel a lot better today, but I probably won't risk it. So I'm going to sit out the dive today, which is really sad. But Brian is going to go with a bunch of our friends and I'm just going to hang with Sierra, which is cool too. And I'm going to be super good at clearing my ears from now on. <laughs> Day two of diving brought noticeably more grouper. Looking back through the footage, you can't really sense it as much on camera since every frame is pretty much full to the brim with grouper on every dive we did. But you could definitely feel that the numbers are rising and there was more energy in the water. It became easier to recognize the females as a few began to show the telltale signs of the belly bulge, meaning their eggs were almost ready to be released as the mass spawning event approached. The swollen eggs are one of the most important indicators of when the spawning will occur, so it was pretty exciting to see that the big moment was approaching. Kaz's ears were better the next day, and we spent as many hours underwater as the tides, wind, and babysitter availability would allow. And finally, after about three days of pure diving bliss, the time had come. That's right. That clock says 3.37 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm quite nervous, actually. <laughs> Mostly for the safety stuff, because it's quite as sketchy as an outgoing tide. You have to do the safety stop in yeah. deep water in the middle of nowhere. You have to pick up outside the pass. It's like a lot. In the giant waves. In the giant waves. <laughs> so we're going to go with the dive shop. Oh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they do it, but we're ready to go and we're going to take Sierra and actually uh, to Brian's friend that is staying in one of the bungalows in there. See how that goes. It's a lot of things to juggle, so <laughs> we better get going. We gotta get going. All right, let's do this. Good morning, notes. Me and Daddy are going to go see the group responding. Are you ready? The full moon led our path to the dock, where we would meet up with the boat from the dive shop. As with any encounter with wildlife, there were no guarantees here with what we could expect. It's not an exact science to figure out when the grouper will spawn, and scientists still have endless questions to answer about the whole process. But more or less, it'll occur on the strongest outgoing tide of the full moon. But blink, and you'll miss it. After weeks of preparation, the whole event occurs in just a few hours. So all we could do was venture out into the darkness and hope that like the groupers eager to pass on their genes to the next generation, that we too would get lucky out there. We jumped in and were immediately met with surge throwing us back and forth. And as we worked our way along the reef, we were met with the most powerful current we've ever felt. Diving at night is already disorientating, but the conditions out here took it to the next level. Our breathing was heavy as we acclimated to what was happening all around us, when we got a harsh reminder of one of the other hazards out here, the sharks. Their demeanor literally changed like night and day, and they were darting all around as they stalked their prey, which thankfully was not us. But as we got settled in, we were able to focus on the whole reason we were out here. This spectacle of nature that very few people are lucky enough to witness.
The males hovered around in waiting, and some slowly began to approach the females. They court the females with movements like these, circling them with a sexy, quivering dance in hopes of enticing them to mate. This was often interrupted when another male challenges them, and a fight for dominance ensues to secure a spot by her side. The bellies of the female were so swollen that it looked like they could pop at any second. Sharks circled all around in anticipation for the grouper to shoot up into the water column, making themselves completely vulnerable to the waiting, hungry predators. The energy in the water was thrilling for everyone, including us humans. This had been one of the most challenging dives we've ever done, and everything leading up to this moment here, underwater in the darkness with five knots of current ripping through the pass around us in a remote atoll in French Polynesia. All of it made this moment feel pretty damn special. The males have already spent weeks here in the pass, battling other males and dodging the many other animals that would happily eat them. And then suddenly, in a decisive moment, somehow, the grouper know that it's time. The female releases her eggs, and the male that shadowed her will fertilize them first, while the other males rush to join in. For the couple, it's over in a second. For all the groupers of Fakarava, in mere hours. Carried out to sea by the rushing current, these fertilized eggs will travel for months, and less than one in a thousand will grow into a juvenile and settle near a reef. Of those, only one in a hundred will survive into adulthood. We did it. It was awesome. The pickup was crazy. But uh, yeah, definitely saw the spawning. I think we were a little bit early, but uh, as the dive went on, the last half especially, you could tell the group were just starting to get excited and then they were starting to like nibbling on each other and like roughing each other up a little bit. And then we saw one and I think I got one on the camera, like right in front of us. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was pretty intense. <laughs> Everybody's good? But well, we all Yay. made it. We all made it. Whoa! Oh, who is it? Hi, Sierra. What are you doing? Daddy back. Mommy and Daddy are back. Yay! Did you have fun? Yeah. What did you do? Cheese. Careful, don't bounce off the window. Oh, the sun is up. The sun is up. The sun is up. Yay. like decompressing what actually happened this morning and thinking back that was a really intense dive like definitely one of the sketchiest dives i've ever done just being out there at night with such a strong outgoing current having all the sharks around you and it was definitely challenging it was i'm so proud of us for actually capturing some of the spawning on video <laughs> brian asked me too and he was like would you do it again tomorrow morning and i was like absolutely not i am just so happy that nobody got hurt and nobody got like swept away or anything like that so and i also think like the the picking up in the boat you're like right next to the reef it was like breaking waves and this dude in this huge boat just kept roaring towards you you know and we just like had to jump in so fast otherwise the boat would like be washed up on the reef and it was just like it was so hectic and i was just like oh. <laughs> i don't know I'm, I'm just like, we're back on the boat. I'm gonna have a cup of tea. I'm just like decompressing. I'm super so good at it, but I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Luckily, when you live on a sailboat and in one of the most exotic locations on planet Earth, decompressing is something we can do pretty well around here. One short dinghy ride and we found ourselves on a postcard of the beach unwinding with friends. 
It had been an exhausting but incredible experience, and we counted ourselves to be so frickin' lucky to have been able to see the spawning at all, since the whole event is totally at the mercy of tens of thousands of wild animals running purely on instinct. Over the years you've spent sailing around the world, diving has been one of my favorite ways of truly exploring a place and seeing and feeling things that are simply impossible to experience in any other way. This one was definitely one for the books, and we really hope you loved coming along on the adventure with us. If you did, be sure to let us know by liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment on this video so that you can see more sailing adventures with us, and join us next week to find out if a mysterious beach find is our ticket to riches or just completely worthless poop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather have it like that. That's great. Are you doing the crab walk? Okay, go. <laughs> I put you in the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs>